YouTube, this is another video for you. Another install for a 2010 Nissan Versa. Today we're uh, putting in a Pioneer AVH X 2700BS with the new App Radio 1 function. Uh, now compatible with iPhone 5 and 6 and 6 Plus, which is nice. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here today. As you notice, we don't have a stereo in here right now, but this will be like there is one there. I'll show you how to, to pull the dash apart, wire up the new stereo, test everything out, and uh, show you some of its features if we get to that point. So, first thing we're going to do is pull this uh, Versa dash apart, and this is a Nissan Versa. This is the 1.6 liter basic base model. Um, pretend that there's an actual stereo here, and we'll proceed to that point. Okay, so the first thing to pull this dash apart would be this seam here pops up basically there's little clips see that just basic there we go you just pull it just a little bit now it doesn't come off because it slides towards you and I see if I can do this with one hand <laughs> Maybe not. I just pulled it towards me, it pops and slides out like that. You see the, there's some clips. And then when we put it back on, same thing, just opposite direction. Panel tool disappeared. Okay, now next thing is you have a screw here and a screw there. And then the rest of this trim panel piece is held on with clips. I'm gonna put the camera down so I can show you. the dash and you're gone forever Neighbors. all right so kind of be gentle do that just kind of work your hands up underneath you can use your panel too, but your fingers here work just fine. Now, very important piece here with these Nissans, never unplug the, the seat belt airbag sensor just because it'll trigger the airbag light on the dash. And you have to either go to somebody with uh, an opportunity to clear the light or the dealer, which may cost you money. So the best thing to do with this, I don't know how well you can see, but it's held on, the whole sensor itself is held on with clips. So rather than pulling the harness out, just pull the whole piece out. Give me one hand at the attempt. So much easier with two hands. Ugh. Okay. Gotta work on it here. Um, there it goes. Okay. Just like that. It just pops out. And then this side's the hazards. That's just fine. That plug. Just remember to plug it back in. Man. Okay. Once those two are done, this piece just pulls out. Set that off to the side. Two are all done. Now you'll notice in the event your Versa has a stereo, that obviously would be there. So the way to pull out the stock one is there's four screws on these brackets. These brackets then come out, and these brackets, either you would put these on your new stereo, or sometimes you can get dash kits that are very, very similar to these, but they're plastic, and they have a little bit of trim piece on each side, like this, right here, and that just kind of fills in the gap when that dash piece is back on the new stereo's in. Honestly, that gap is so small that you can almost use these factory brackets and be just fine. So, you would pull these out, which I'm going to do, and then you'll pull these off the stock stereo and we're going to use the Pioneer hardware that's supplied with the unit. Uh, there are three flathead screws and then 
uh, three pan head screws. So whatever one choose you choose, use the one with the Pioneer unit. And uh, I'm gonna go and get that done and I'll come back to you, which in the next segment will wire this puppy up. So we'll see you then. Okay, let's go ahead and unbox this new stereo. Light attempt again, one-handed. So usually in these uh, sets here, you're gonna have a remote standard coming with uh, Pioneer stereos. USB extension cable. Mic. Main wiring harness. Supplied hardware. Got the manual and then the unit, which is down here. And you'll notice with these three sets of four volt preamps, auxiliary EVN, um, video out, backup camera in. This is a VGA input typically for um, added navigation module. We have the mic, steering wheel control input, 3.5 millimeter jack, auxiliary input jack. Now this one's for the iData Link. Uh, Maestro, this is more for retaining factory features, which this car doesn't have, and I don't even have that module anyways, so we won't use that. This is for satellite radio, S, uh, XM, is your antenna input, and your main harness input with your 10 amp views. There you are. Now the B and BS stands for Bluetooth, and the S stands for satellite radio, if you wondered that. Um, the only upgrade for the 3700 is the 3700 um, comes with another input for a camera and oh it's it's a BHS so it also has HD radio that would be the difference between this one and that one okay I'm gonna get this bolted on to those little brackets okay bracket use the pan heads three screws should be good put those brackets right on and I chose those holes because as you notice the brackets have little indents or kind of look like rivets those indents follow indents on the stereo so that's the uh, spot it all fits nicely fits nice and flush okay so we're gonna put this guy off to the side for now oh that doesn't get hurt next thing here is the wiring harness. Now fortunately, I've already had an aftermarket stereo in the here before I had a Sony. Um, one of the first generation Sony Bluetooths doubled in with touch screens and then uh, decided to do something a little bit different, go Pioneer, since uh, this Pioneer is a little bit more Apple friendly than that Sony was. Now I already had a wiring harness. Um, in this vehicle, I have two amps, a four channel and a mono. And because of that, I'm not gonna use the factory speaker outputs, which I'll just show you here in a second. I'll cap them off because I'm going to use those pre outs on the back of the stereo instead that run signal to the amp. Now, what I have here is this actually is called nine conductor cable. Pick that up on Amazon, made by Metra. Basically, this cable, no, install it. Sorry, Metra makes it too. Um, the output speaker outputs on the amp I plug this into and basically what this is it's a shielded speaker wire with nine wires now it's two wires per speaker so there's eight wires and then it comes with an option for um, a right there step loop one there it's a remote turn on wire for your amps very convenient so I recommend this stuff, it's awesome, super easy, and the nice thing is it's labeled and colored just as your wiring harnesses. So let's say in the scenario we run, like I have, speaker output from your four channel amp up to here, then I wire that into the factory harness, so when I plug that in, that goes to the factory speakers. So that eliminates the need for me to run new speaker wire to each door, which would be a hassle. I'm using the fax speaker, um, fax speaker wire that goes to the doors anyways. 
if I was running high energy Hertz or Audison speakers or some JLs, I'd probably want to upgrade to a heavier gauge and run new wires to the doors anyways. But in here, came with Kenwoods, I'm just leaving them. They sound just fine, especially on this amp. They don't require that high energy cable. I'm gonna do this way instead. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, then I can explain that more in the comments below. Anyways, what I'm going to do at this point is I, uh, I'm gonna cut this off. No, excuse me, I don't need to. <laughs> I'm going to cut these old connectors off. Now these are butt connectors or barrel connectors. A lot of people get these and just smash them together. I actually use a designated crimper and I have never had issues nor did they come apart. A lot of people just smash them with pliers and you'll have issues down the road. If you use these, use a crimper or you can solder and shrink wrap. Uh, that works just fine. Heat shrink, shrink the tubes. Stop talking, get working here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and I'll be back. Okay, here's just a quick explanation of wire colors and these harnesses. Very standard across the, the market here with coloring for aftermarket. Um, starting here, this yellow is your 12 volt constant or your memory wire that old school people like to say. Basically, that's on all the time. Um, your orange is your illumination slash dimmer. This is a dimmer ground, which I don't use. This basically, when you turn your lights on, dims the screen so it's not spread it in at night. Black's always your ground. This red is your 12 volt ignition. When the key is on, since power to the speaker, amplifiers, whatever you have it hooked up to, which will tell it to turn on. Um, this blue is either power antenna or in some applications, your remote turn on wire for your amps. That's me in this case. I'll hook this to the Stereo's blue and white wire, which is the amp trigger or turn on wire. And that's about it for those. Now these ones that I'm not cutting, just because my application is a little bit different. Um, white with no stripe is left speaker positive. White with a negative or a black stripe is the negative wire on the left speaker. And then gray positive no stripe, negative with a stripe. Green is left rear speaker with a line is negative, without a line is positive. And the uh, right rear without a line is positive, with a line is negative. So with aftermarket in this setup, negative always has a line. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna now match those up with these guys. Now basically it is almost identical except for this long green one which is your parking brake wire which basically allows video playback on the screen when the vehicle is in park and the brake is on. In my case, I really don't care for that. So I actually went ahead and purchased, let's see if I have that readily available here. Pick these up on Amazon for 15 bucks. Um, I'll show you how to wire these up. This is the uh, park brake bypass, allowing you to watch video playback while in motion. And I'm going to use that also for navigation and everything like that. So, there you go. And uh, yeah, and in addition, I'll show you my other goodies that I got. You have this guy, which basically, I'll show you later, there you are. It's the, the uh, aux and USB, it's uh, just a flush mount adapter that allows me to have the aux and USB on the units in a better location than on the back of the stereo. Okay, I'm gonna get that wired up and I'll show you how that. Okay, before I zip tie and make this look nice and pretty and clean, I'll show you some of the additional features that this thing has is a backup camera, which I do have on this vehicle. Um, that's what that is, the reverse gear signal input. And basically, I ran some extra cable I had all the way down in the kick panel in this vehicle. Um, even with the test light, you can find the reverse wire. Basically, it sends current when the car is in reverse, and it does it when it's in drive, or any other gear besides reverse. 
So I tapped into that, and that'll go into the unit. So when the car is in reverse, it sends a 12 volt signal to the unit, thus telling it to switch over to the input for the camera, and we'll display whatever that input has, which in this case is a camera. And uh, that's basically it, super simple setup. And then this has a mute, which I don't have in this car, so I just take that off along with the speaker wire, because I'm not using the speaker from the speaker outputs from the stereo, I'm using the amp, hence that's why I have that 9 conductor cable. Now that's um, bypass the, the park brake bypass here, put that in there. So the way that this hooks up is the blue wire connects into your blue and white amplifier turn on wire, which as you follow it, it does. It also, I tied it also into my amplifier input, which goes all the way back to my amps. So that's that. And then also the black, just tie it in with the ground, which I did. And then the green goes into the uh, parking brake. So basically, this holds the unit telling it that the park brake's on all the time. That's all that does, that little that's a, just a little teeny relay, which more than likely it is. These are awesome. Like I said, 15 bucks on Amazon. Five star rating. Never had an issue with one yet. I put a bunch in for a bunch of people. Okay, so I'm gonna tidy up those wires. What this guy is, is I always ground my head unit too. So I'll put this on one of those screws. In the event that there's any possibility of an in engine interference, that should take care of it, typically. Okay. All right, so time to clean up some wires and uh, start putting this in. Now, while I do that, the rest of this mess shouldn't be too much of a mess. I just have extra cable. That's my antenna input from the vehicle. I'll put that in. And then here, there's my RCAs for my amp. Now, and then there's the plug that that harness will plug into this guy those two in together. That's basically it. Everything else here is self-explanatory. Um, I may run another pair of RCs down the road just because I still only had two sets of pre-outs instead of three. So my uh, base amp will now have its own designated set of pre-outs, which is awesome. Okay, time to clean up and start re-constructing the dash, I guess. All right, everything's zip-tied. Clean as you can get it there. Turn to take everything back down in there. All right, now before I actually start hooking things up, um, I am going to put in this USB and auxiliary extension kit. That this was 12 bucks, I think, on Amazon, 14. And basically, I'm going to put the male ends that plug into the stereo here and run this down. And me, Michael, see if I can get it to fit here. I don't know. We'll figure out a place to put it. But at least I gotta run it for now. So, I'm gonna do that. Okay, quick segment here. Everything's plugged in. Okay, so as you can see, those brackets will hold the stereo on. This little thing that I put on is right there when I screw it in. Now, this isn't the only ground, this is just in addition. Just FYI. Good to go. Now before we really button it up, let's see if we can clean the keys. Give it a shot. Let's see what it looks like here. Excited to see it. basically like setting your speakers to an active phase versus a passive phase and what that means is you choose your frequencies you choose your levels it's like having an audio processor built in now if you don't really know what you're doing when you set this up just go with standard mode for me in this instance I don't necessarily want to set up uh, highs mids and my sub at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and do standard now for this connection, I have an iPhone. I'm going to use that feature there. 
If you have an Android, go to Others. You'd have to check online to see which Android phones are compatible. And it's either wireless or by USB. Now, if I do wireless, you notice it grays out App Radio 1, Mirror Link, and USB. We're going to go by USB. And that doesn't mean that I won't have Bluetooth options. I still will. But my main connection, if I'm going to use App Radio and the maps, calendar, weather, and media, I'm going to have to go by USB because that allows me to use the App Radio 1 feature in USB thumb drives. Boom. So that boots up here. Now typically with the app radio that'll show up here once I plug in my phone. I'm going to have to play around with it. There may be a firmware update that this one requires. I know for previous 2700 BS models we'll need to do the firmware update to have the app radio on. So just FYI, I'll have to look at this to see which firmware update this one currently has to determine if I need to do the same. But that's basically it here. settings I'm gonna go through. Nice thing is with this thing it has a whole bunch of especially audio settings. That's nothing another thing with the uh, firmware update is with the uh, big 13 band audio adjustments that you can do or the preset one is down below. Yeah lots of options here. Um, basically, here's all your features here. Once I do plug in, I'll have Pandora, I'll have all these options, especially when I set up the Bluetooth audio. All right, now at this point, basically I have everything put in. Here's my little extension that I put in so I can have access to the auxiliary and the USB from behind the unit. I also ran my Bluetooth mic, which, pull the wire down, oh, man. Around here somewhere, trust me. There it is. This guy, so I'm gonna work up down below to the kick panel. To the kick panel, I'm gonna run behind the rubber seal on the door all the way up, and I'm gonna put that guy probably right up there. So that's basically it. I'm gonna keep plugging away and I'll come back with another update. Alright, so. I'm going to put those two screws back in, and this thing's going to pop together, and that's basically the dash all completed here. Um, at this point, if you have any more questions, just let me know here in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment anytime if you want to keep seeing some more here. Uh, a few things that I just won't show on camera that are kind of boring. I'm just going to mount this uh, USB auxiliary holder, and then I'm going to run the, uh, the mic up there. Um, I have to go through and make some adjustments, but I'll also do another video down here on the road about amplifier and how everything's hooked up here in the trunk in case you're interested. Um, thanks for watching you guys and have a good one.